Hello and welcome to this video from FilmsByChris.com. That's Chris the K. I'm Chris the K. This is part two in a series. We're creating a very, very basic little platform jumper in Godot Game Engine. Uh, Godot Ga Game Engine, again, is a great game engine, free, open source, and it uh, does both 2D and 3D games. We are going very simple with our graphics today and stuff, but we're just this is for people who are brand new to game development. Be sure to watch the previous video. This is what we have so far. We can use left and right arrows to move our character around, and I can hit space bar to jump. We're going to do a few more things. Uh, one thing, at this point, uh, we have it set so the game goes full screen, but we don't have an exit button. And on most systems, you can hit Alt F4. You may have something else set up to close windows, so when the game's open, hit Alt F4 if you don't know how to get out of it. We're going to set it up so we can hit press escape to get out of it, because maybe people don't know about Alt F4. Uh, so let's go in here. That's one of the things we're going to do. We're also going to change the controls a little bit. Maybe add some sounds. So we're in our game here. Let's go up to project here. So well, actually, let's look at our player script. So click on our player tab, player, player script. And here we have things like UI accept, UI left, UI right. These are preset in Godot. We're going to make our own here, though, because UI accept to jump is... Silly, except a space, but that's just a silly name for it. Okay, so we're going to go in here. So let me do that again in case. Project, project settings. We're going to go to the input map. And here you can map any keyboard, mouse, or game controller presses into uh, your game. <laughs> so here I'm going to type in left, hit enter, right, and I'm going to say jump. And then we'll also say exit. Okay? So let's go to the left here. We press this little plus sign and it opens up this window. And then you can take your keyboard or mouse or game controller and press a key. So in this case, I'm going to press the left arrow. At this point, I'll click OK. But I don't want just left arrow. I'm going to press that again. And I'm going to press A because many games use A as left. Uh, and then I also have a game controller. So I'm going to click this and I'm going to click the left arrow on my D-pad. And then we'll click and it's set to all devices by default. You can set specific devices. Uh, I don't know if we're going to get into multiplayer stuff on here. We're just going to leave it as all devices. I would always use all devices because I usually map out different players in code, not in this interface. But we'll click OK. So now the player can press, well, once we change the code, they press left A or the left arrow on a gamepad, any of the gamepads hooked up, to go left. Let's do the same thing for right. So I'll do right arrow, OK, plus the plus again. I'll do D. OK, and then I'll press the plus arrow again, and on my game controller, press the right arrow. Now we're going to do jump. I'm going to go ahead. I'll leave space as an option, but I also just like pressing up. So in this case, arrow up, W for up. And on our game controller, I'll just press one of the buttons, button Nintendo A or Xbox B. OK, so we have some jump buttons. And then we want to be able to exit, right? So we're going to click this. I'm going to hit Escape and click OK. So our Escape key will be our exit button. We still have to program it, though. We'll click Close. In here, now we need to update our controls here. For here, all we have to do in uh, Input is Action Just Pressed, Jump. And then for this Input Get Access Left and Right, we're going to go Left and Right. OK. Now, if I hit F5, I can press left arrow, right arrow, or the up arrow to jump. I can do A, D, or W to jump. I can hit spacebar to jump. I can pick up any of my game pads and I can press left and right and press the A button or B button depending on how they're mapped out on your game controller to jump. Great. And we still have to hit Alt F4 or whatever keys you have to exit out of programs. Let's go ahead and click on our map here and click on our map and we're going to say attach a script. We're going to put this in our scenes directory and we'll just call it map. This will be our basic script for all our maps because we might make multiple levels. We'll click create. And in here, under process, we're going to say if input with a capital uh, I dot is action just pressed. And we're going to say exit. And then here we're going to say get tree dot quit. So in real case scenario, when you're in your map, you're going to set when you hit escape to go back to a main menu. We don't have a main menu. But all this is saying, this is your process. This is constantly being looped and checked. It's waiting here. OK, if you press an input, and if that input was just pressed, and it's the exit button, which in our case is escape, we should probably map something to game controllers as well. But 
right now we'll just do escape. What are we going to do? We're going to get our game tree. Your game tree is this over here. This is a tree when you ever have any things that fold in and out like this. So this is your game tree. And what are we going to do? We're going to say quit. That's it. And we can get rid of this pass now. That pass is just a placeholder if you don't have anything in this function. So fun is function. This is the name of a built-in function. So now if I hit F5, we'll start our game. And if I hit the escape key, our game exits. And of course, if we made a menu, we would want to go to the menu. And then maybe from the menu, if you press escape again, it will exit whatever we want because we're, we're the programmers. We can make this do whatever we want. Great. Let's add some sounds to our game now. No, you know what? Let's do one other thing first. I'm going to set it up so that, uh, see, if I hit F5 now, you can see my mouse cursor, and there might be games where you want to see your mouse cursor or make your own custom mouse cursor. This game, we don't want to see the mouse cursor. So let's go ahead and fix that real quick. So what we're going to do here is um, we're going to set it when the map starts. So in this ready, once the map is ready, we're going to say input dot set. And again, it does auto completion for you. What we want is set underscore mouse. It's not auto completing correctly. Let me just continue typing what I was going to type. Mouse mode. And we're going to set input dot mouse mode hidden. I don't know why I didn't autocomplete mouse mode. There was another mouse cursor. I don't know if that's just a newer version. I'm just going off old memory stuff. But if I hit F5 now, let's see. Okay, our mouse is missing. I don't know why it didn't autocomplete properly there. But that's the code to hide your mouse. We can still hit escape to get out of that. So our game's already looking better, right? It's going full screen. We can escape to exit. There's no mouse cursor. We can use a game controller or our keyboard to move our mouse around. Let's go ahead and go to our player. Right click on player. And we're going to add a child. And we're going to say audio. And what we want, we want audio stream player 2D. Not 3D or just audio player. 2D. Uh, 2D will make it so the sound will come out of the proper speaker. So if the action happens on the left side of the screen, it comes more out of your left ear and or goes into your left ear, I guess. On the right side of the screen, it will be on the right side. So let's go ahead and just rename this jump or JMP, whatever if you want to abbreviate like I do. Uh, and if we look in our resources objects mouse, I have a jump sound here for you. With this selected, we'll drag this over into the stream where it says empty. Great, that's there. Now we just need to set it to play. And we will do that here. So input, this is where we have our jump uh, options for. And in a bigger game, you would break this down. You might have a function for controls like jump and move left and right. It's a very simple game. We're doing everything basically in one function here. Uh, but we can say dollar sign jmp dot play. And now if I hit F5, and I don't have my recording set to record the output of my computer, so I will just make sure that it's playing. I turn the volume up. Oh, we didn't. Did, we did put it in our code. Let's see. Let's see what's happening here. So we have jump play. That's our sound. And so when we jump, it should make a sound. Let me put my headphones on real quick here. No, it's not playing through my headphones. I... Oh, okay. My computer was muted. Let's turn that down a little bit. So that's the sound. That's just the sound I put in there for you. You can adjust the pitch. So that's kind of high pitched. Let's uh, adjust it down a little bit. Let's see how this sounds. I don't know. But now. Great. Okay. So now we have sounds for our character. Let's add uh, a coin for us to collect. So it's something for us to do. Or should we continue with jumping? Let's add double jump and then we'll add coins. Okay. So let's come up here. Let's create a variable. Now I added this dollar sign JMP, which says look at the in the tree here, something called JMP and play it. You can do that. But what might be a more proper way is to give this a name. So I'm going to say SND for JMP. I just like to abbreviate stuff. And up here, I'm going to say at on ready var for variable SND JMP equals. And then again, you can just drag this over. And again, that way, we're, we're very simple here. But if we got more complex and we had a lot of different things and we drug this into a, uh, a, a different place, uh, 
we would have to change it in multiple places possibly. This says, okay, we can just change it in one place and it'll apply to the rest of the script. So we're doing the same thing. We added a line of code. It's up to you on how you do that for a simple little game like this. Let's make sure we did everything properly though. Great. Let's do a double jump. Let's create a variable. We'll call it, we'll have a variable up here. We'll call it var and we'll say double, whoops, spell it right underscore jump and we'll set that to true so at this point they can double jump uh, and then what we're going to do down here is we're going to say l if and let's just copy and paste some of this we're going to say this and you can do ampersand ampersand or take the word end it just means end this so you're looking at two things that are true so we're going to say double jump colon and then at that point we can do this but we also want to at that point hit double jump equals false and up here and I'm going to explain all this in a second double double jump equals true I did something wrong it's complaining uh, so oh I abbreviated when I I'm not abbreviating anymore there we go so what does this say? Okay, again, this is in our physics loop. This is constantly looping. Uh, we come down here and it says, if input action, just press jump. So if you press jump, but we don't want it to happen anytime. Let me do this, ampersand, ampersand. This is saying, and. So it's looking for two things to be true. Both these things have to be true. You're pressing whatever jump buttons you set up and the player is on the floor. This is a built-in function that checks to make sure the player is on the floor. Because if you got rid of that and you press the jump button multiple times, you would just keep flying. Okay, if both those things are true, if he's on the floor and you press the jump button, we're going to make sure that double jump is set to true. That will reset it for us anytime we need it. It will play the sound and a velocity, y, remember y is up and down, jump velocity, which is a variable up here set to negative 300. So it's going to make our player go up. Now we have input is action press jump, so we're still checking did they press jump. Now we don't care if they're on the floor, but we're checking is double jump true. If it is, then allow them to jump a second time to do a double jump. But as soon as you do that, you want to make sure you hit you set double jump to false, okay? Because if you don't, again, you have that scenario where you're flying. Uh, I, I can show you that. If I was to comment this out, so any line with a pound symbol there is a comment, means it's not going to run. So now if I run this and I come over here, if I keep hitting up, I'm flying. If you want to fly, there you go. But if we set it to false, we can come over here and now it's set to true. As soon as I hit the button the second time, it's gonna set it to false until we jump again from the floor. So I can keep on hitting it. So it's only allowing me to do a double jump. Okay, so we have double jump, great, with sound effects. Let's go ahead and create some coins to collect. We're gonna create a new scene. We're gonna press the plus button here. Uh, we're gonna say uh, new 2D scene, we'll call this coin. And then we're gonna come down here and under objects, coin, I have a coin image and I have a uh, coin sound. Let's go to 2D here, this is our coin scene. Let's just go ahead and right click, add sprite. We'll add a 2D sprite and we will also add in a, an area 2D. And to the area 2D, we will add a collision shape. Now, let's select our sprite and drag over this coin image right here to texture where it says empty, drag and drop that. We have our coin. Let's collect on, cl click on our collection or collision shape. <laughs> and here uh, again for this, we'll choose <clears throat> capsule again and we will shrink it down so that it fits our coin here. Great. We also want to make sure if we choose our area 2D, we are going to say collision Collectibles are going to be on three and it's going to co collide with player one basically or any player because we might have multiple players At this point We're going to come over here to where it says node. Let's go ahead select our coin Let's go ahead and say group and we're going to add this to a group. We're going to say plus sign. We'll say collectibles And we'll make that a global group and for our players, let's go ahead and just make sure that they're in a group. 
plus. So we have our players selected. We're going to say players. This will allow us to anytime we want to check all of our players, they're all in a group that we can check. Let's go back to our coin here. We'll press Control S to save. Let's press up arrow. It's so where in our objects directory, go to coin, and we'll just save the scene as coin. Great. Now we have our player here, we have our coin. With our coin, we're going to now set a signal. So select your coin, actually select your area 2D, make sure we click on node, and then signals. And down here, our player has a body. So we're going to say when a body is entered, we're going to double click this and then, oh, got to add a script to our coin. Right click our coin and say attach a script and we'll save it as uh, coin.gd, create. Now click on our area 2D, node, signals, body entered. And down here we'll just leave that as the default or you can call it collected or whatever you want. But right now it's saying, okay, anytime it collides with a body that's on a layer that we said it would, which is one, which should just be players, uh, but it's a good idea to check. Right here, body is what it's colliding with. So just a double check, even though we put it, uh, players on their own collision layer, what I can do here, just double check, I'm gonna say if body dot is in group, and here in quotations we'll say players, actually let's say not true, then return. All depends on how you wanna do it avoiding more indentations what we're doing here. So we're saying if the exclamation mark means not true. So if here we're saying, is this in the group of players? So the thing that touches the coin, is it, in, is it a player? But here we're saying, exclamation mark, we're saying, if it's not a player, return. Just exit out of this function. If it is a player, well then we're gonna take that body dot coins and we're going to add equals one to it. Don't need that semicolon at the end. Control S. Now to do that, we're going to come over here to players and we're going to create a variable for this player. Coins equals zero. We're not going to see this in this particular tutorial, but when, now when the coin is collected, they will uh, add a, a, a coin to that player. And then we're going to say uh, Q free. That will delete the coin. Save that. Go to map. Go to our tile map here, 2D. Find our coin, make sure it's coin TSCN, and drag and drop it right there. Now, let's go here and just see if we did everything right. The coin disappears. But we want it to make a noise when we collect it, right? So let's go back to our coin here. And we're going to add a child. We're going to choose audio stream player 2d let's go ahead and just rename this to snd or sound whatever you want to call it choose it make sure we're on inspector over here and you can see stream is empty drag over this coin sound and now let's go to the script for the coin and what we can say down here is dollar sign snd Right? So that's going to be our sound. And we're going to say dot play. The problem here, though, is if we try to do this, you're not going to hear the sound. And actually, let's go to our map and move that coin down a little bit so that we don't have to jump. But there's no sound. Why is there no sound? Well, it goes to play the sound, but before it has a chance to play, we're removing the coin. So it deletes everything from it, including its sound. So what we can do here is choose our sound in our coin. We're going to come over here to node, signals, finished. This will create a function that when the sound is done playing, then it will do something. So we're going to choose that and we're going to say unfinished. We can do that or we can rename it. We can call it something like remove. Okay. Connect. And now we can remove, we can take this free cue and move it down here. Now, when we click the coin, we'll hear the noise, and then after that, it will delete the coin. See, it takes a moment though. So if we were to actually run this again, the problem with this is we can click that coin multiple times, right? And it doesn't go away until the sound finishes playing. We don't want that. So what we're gonna do here 
So we're going to, in our coin script, we're going to create a variable called active. We'll set it equal to true. Okay. And then down here, we're going to say if it's the player and we are active, but we don't want to be active. We want to be not active. Okay. So we're checking untrue things here. Uh, at this point, we're going to say active equals false. So what that will do is if we hit F5 now, if I did everything properly, the coin won't disappear, but we can't. Okay. I did do it wrong. Let's say active. Let's see. Okay, what am I doing wrong? We have active set to true. And here we're checking. Okay, so if it's not the player, okay, that is wrong. Let's try to do it in one. I, I know I can do it in one. What I'm going to say here, here, this is what we do. I said and we want it to be or. So two ampersands, or you can type the word or. I'll type or for you. It might be a little clearer. I like just doing double ampersand or ampersand. Pipe symbols, not active. Okay. So here we're saying, okay, if it's not the player or if we're not active, then just return, just exit out of this. So now the coin will disappear right away, but we won't be able to collect it more than once. See, and then the sound will disappear. So what we want to do at this point is drag over our sprite. Again, we could create variables for this, but I'm going to take our sprite 2D and I'm going to say dot visible equals false. So when I collect the coin, it will disappear. It will play the sound, disappear, give me a, a coin. But it, technically, it's still there until the sound finishes playing. But we're not going to see it. Great. Um, so let me quickly review this because I know I was a little sloppy in explaining it. We've set it up so that when a body is entered, any object that, that the coin can collide with collides with it, it's going to run this function. It's going to check. If it's not in the player, just return. Or if the coin is not active, just return. That means exit out of this function. Otherwise, it's going to continue. It will set it to inactive to make sure that we can't run this function a second time. We're going to make it invisible. We're going to play a sound, and we're going to give the player a coin. The sound is set through signals, through the signal over here, to run this free queue. Uh, we could have called that directly instead of creating a separate function, but there might be other things you want to do when you're removing the coin. So it doesn't hurt to make a new function there. So now we can go back over here and we can go to our map, 2D, map 2D. And let's go ahead and select this coin. I'm going to go Shift D, Shift D, Shift D. Not lining them up great. There's actually a better way to put them into your map, which we'll go over in a future video. But let me go ahead and hit F5 now. Yay, I can collect coins. OK. I hope you found this video useful. We'll do some more in this series uh, coming up in future videos. I thank you for watching. As always, uh, visit filmedbychris.com. That's Chris with a K. There's a link in the description. As always, I thank you for watching, and I hope that you have a great day.